Well, there is plenty of challenges to pick from if you want to solve one. May it be biodiversity, may it be growing inequalities, decreasing access to healthcare, rise of populism. Wherever you want to become the hero of tomorrow's society, yeah, there's plenty to choose from. And of course, there's policies to shape, there's business models to innovate, technologies to implement. So. The people, universities shape, will shape tomorrow's society. The question is, who needs to shape and how need universities, how, they, how do they need to be shaped in order to really get the desired outcome, um, a society that thrives and is enabled to solve these questions? We'll get um, some answers now, hopefully, by chokingly, I would say, so to say, the, the Dutchmeier Goebel, Dirk. Lorbach. Um, both of them actually met today at the festival here in backstage and had a very happy hello because I think they know each other for more than 10 years, 15 years already. I think 25 When they were years. both in their early careers um, of really becoming transformation researchers, so to say. We all know in which direction Maya Goepel went and those of you who do not know Dirk, he is now the director of DRIFT, the Dutch Research Institute for Transitions. And he's basically one of the founders of the transition management approach as a new form of governance for sustainable development. So I'm very excited to have you on stage here with us to enlighten us about your research and uh, the very practical implications of it. Welcome, Dirk. Thank you. Danke schön. Um, Danke. Es freut mich sehr, hier zu sein. Ich kann es leider nicht auf Deutsch machen, so ich I will speak English. Thank you for not going outside to have a drink in the sun. I think I know it's tempting, and I'll try to make it entertaining here for you at the at the end of this very exciting day. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I, I hear so many different stories and perspectives uh, that uh, uh, empower me, but also inspire me. And I think it's, it's well needed and, and we should have something like this in the Netherlands. I will um, uh, tell you a bit about my uh, journey into transformation research. Indeed, I, I know Maya Goepel from uh, 25 years ago, which is also uh, when we both started um, uh, basically using our professional career to try and change the world or better put uh, to be part of the world that is changing. I will uh, start from um, um, uh, my uh, uh, the left side of my identity which is director of an institute which is formerly a social enterprise at Erasmus University. I was surprised to hear it come uh, appear in a, in a presentation this afternoon. It's a university in Rotterdam. It's a very neoclassical economic university with a business school uh, famous for new public management. It will come back in the story, but it's, it's basically a very traditional uh, academic institution. Um, we were in 2011, we were kicked out of the social sciences faculty for being undisciplined and normative. Uh, which I think is what we have to do, uh, and I will get to that. The uh, second uh, half of my presentation is about the uh, transition experiment that we uh, run, uh, me and colleagues, the last uh, four years to try and change this uh, old-fashioned 20th century university into a modern one. We failed, but we learned a lot. So um, I'll start here. Uh, which is also uh, the starting point of this transformation transition research. And you know these figures probably, they are about climate change and biodiversity loss. That doesn't really matter. Well, it matters because we're all going down. But uh, uh, what fascinates us and me is that this is also an illustration of the failure of our knowledge system, uh, education and research. So what is depicted here on this graph is the rising carbon emissions and plotted on it are all the uh, global policy agreements. But you can uh, replace that with all sorts of uh, good intentions from policymakers, businesses, everything that is labeled sustainability. You can plot on that graph and you can see the impact. Our university calls it positive societal impact. Um, the basic starting point is we know all this and we know it for decades and somehow there is a problem with how we transfer knowledge into action, whether it's policy or whether it's what we teach students that then end up in government institutions or uh, uh, businesses to 
uh, do something. It's not working, um, but basically you could argue it's uh, unsustainability by design. That's the global picture, but this, these are some pictures from Rotterdam, my city, and, and we see the same kind of pattern at the local scale. I don't know if you can relate to it, but uh, 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 in some cases not. Rotterdam is below sea level. We have a very fossilized port. It's a, a car-based city. There are huge social uh, uh, inequalities. Uh, and these are all what we call persistent social problems. We have a lot of researchers paying attention to it. They, uh, uh, these problems appear in educational programs. Uh, we, uh, the university works with uh, policy makers. We inform policy, policy uses knowledge, gets money uh, from our taxes to then invest in these problems, and it doesn't change. So this picture is about health inequalities in the dark red areas of the city. People die on average seven to 12 years before the Dutch average. And this is figures that are consistent since we have been uh, tracking the data. So knowledge and policy is failing. Uh, and I can, uh, I, we call it unsustainability by design. There is sort of a, a historical uh, um, institutional pathway through which our educational and uh, uh, academic institutions have been built that has been designed to uh, support a model of linear uh, extractive and fossil growth. It's the model of modernization, um, especially successful in the post-war decades. It created huge uh, 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 um, uh, economic growth, but it also created all sorts of uh, uh, additional ecological and social problems. And then uh, when these problems were created through the implementation of technologies or the models of economists, then social scientists or environmental scientists come in and they study the problems and they come up with recommendations to make it better. So we have environmental policies. Uh, in the Netherlands, um, uh, if you look at the figures, our whole uh, environment is polluted. It's full of plastic, of PFAS, uh, of nitrogen, um, so much for environmental policies. Um, and the interesting squeeze is that, uh, uh, so the starting point for us is to figure out how can this be that our uh, academic system is uh, continuing to just study these problems and then inform policy, but it doesn't really change. Um, and at the same time, it's becoming more and more pressured by cutting budgets. We now have a right-wing uh, government in, in uh, uh, the Netherlands that has plans to uh, uh, cut budgets even more. And one of their core uh, points is that education should be politically neutral. So they want to also uh, uh, get rid of all the... Uh, professors like me, for example, uh, that have an opinion or at least build, uh, base their work on actual science. Um, in transitions research, we use this concept to explain why it's so hard to change. Um, we build this, this idea of a regime. It comes from very different disciplines, but it refers to this idea from social sciences, structuration. We are all living in a context that we co-created. So uh, um, a regime is the shared way of thinking, the shared structures and practices that humans develop in a way to, to uh, make life easy. So every institution has a regime, but also social systems have a regime. So our mobility regime, or you can study the, the waste regime, the healthcare regime, um, or a university regime. And over time, it's a regime is what makes life easy because you don't have to do everything. I, I had great food and drinks and this is organized because we have divided tasks and, and uh, uh, formulated rules and regulations and this is how we behave. Uh, I sit, I'm speaking here and you sitting over there listening. So there are norms, but also uh, shared practices and routines. But the concept attached to it is path dependency. It's very hard to escape from um, these institutionalized ways of thinking, doing, and organizing. Um, yet, if we look from, uh, at complexity science, but also historically, um, there are always moments in time when this path dependency is broken. So the idea of transition is basically um, the storyline that if something is unsustainable, it cannot be sustained indefinitely, think of the limits to growth, um, sooner or later, it will be pushed out of equilibrium. 
So, in transition research, to put it simply, we know the context is changing. Digitalization, aging population, sustainability, climate change, uh, globalization, geopolitics. So, society has to adapt to it. Um, and the normal uh, uh, response, because these regimes are so path dependent, is that we absorb and we try to adapt and we try to improve and optimize. But that gets harder and harder. And we get more and more internal problems and tensions, uh, and that ultimately leads to a, a, a destabilization and a, a feeling at least of chaos, but in the worst case, it can lead to collapse. The uh, other side of, of the curve, uh, bottom uh, left, is that individuals are always able to find some alternatives. They're always pioneers, uh, also in ecology, you always have new seeds spreading, you have variation and selection, and out of those uh, uh, pioneering alternatives, new structures emerge. So a transition is basically uh, something that ecologists can study, they call it tipping points, uh, or, you can, uh, uh, or historians study it, afterwards you can describe a transition from A to B, from horses and carriages to cars, for example. Um, we try to apply this to study transitions in the making. Um, and uh, uh, we, I uh, had the discussion with Maya this morning about it. Uh, we've always uh, worked from knowing that we are heading as a society in this pattern. So we don't know where we are, but inevitably this model of linear transfer of knowledge or linear fossil extractive growth will come to an end whether it's climate collapse or social collapse, or uh, we find something better. So our transition approach is try to use this heuristic to uh, organize conversations, to create storylines. Um, you can ask yourself, okay, where are we, where am I in this figure, uh, won't go in there. Uh, but there's increasing evidence that we are at least uh, moving uh, um, uh, from the left side uh, towards the middle. And, and uh, you see the polarization in Europe. I don't have to give a lot of examples, but uh, food is, is an, a clear evidence. On the one hand, you have the farmers that resist in the meat industry. Uh, this is a picture from uh, uh, the Netherlands. Uh, my, my sister's in there. I was uh, a coward on the side of the road. Uh, Extinction Rebellion, uh, pushing for fossil uh, subsidies. Um, what we see a, a lot is that we are in a, a sort of a social process where we first have to go through the phase of, of acknowledging the problem um, and coming to terms with the fact that the way we've organized society is actually the problem. This growth orientation, this linear uh, model is failing. Um, the next step is to conclude that it will also mean that we have to let go of stuff. And that is something that we don't want as humans. If we start to feel pain, we re re retreat or we listen to populists that promise us that uh, they can cure us or without any uh, problem. Um, if we fail, and we, uh, 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 we, then we end up in panic. Um, what we focus on in, in transitions is uh, what is the potential, because ultimately, if we want to achieve a truly just and so, uh, sustainable society, we need, uh, we need to go through the pain. It's inevitable, so let's try to anticipate and see where the potential is of alternatives and then uh, uh, um, ultimately find a new narrative in society, we call it transition pleasure, where we uh, see that it's actually possible to build an economy that is truly just and sustainable. And we've been working for a very long time, studying, working with pioneers in food. We can have regenerative food systems, we can have uh, cities for wa walking and cycling, we can have renewable energy systems. Um, the consequence is degrowth. Uh, but our focus should be uh, on expanding uh, what is already possible. So we call it transition agency. It's trying to look for those pioneers that started to be a vegetarian in the 90s or experiment with solar panels 20 years ago, um, but also the ones that are more social entrepreneurial or social designer-like. Uh, they uh, uh, have already gone through the pain, said goodbye, and, and are just trying to take small steps. We say it's radical thinking and diplomatic doing. So. 
Um, there's much more. You can read the whole library, uh, but I want to uh, uh, spend the last part to explain how we try to apply this to our university regime. I already told you Rotterdam is a particular type of university. Um, it's built around disciplines. It has a very a positivistic idea of what good science is. It's disciplinary. You publish in, in five top journals within your discipline. It means you need to be objective and descriptive and empirical. Um, and, and from our perspective, uh, partially irrelevant. So what we started to see, especially irrelevant when it comes to uh, helping to support these emerging processes of um, uh, uh, sustainability transitions. It's perhaps even worse because from that attitude, you keep describing and analyzing and improving the status quo and by definition are sort of part of the regime. And our university, it has uh, 40,000 students. Uh, it produces thousands of students trained in neoclassical economics, uh, in pu new public management that end up in offices that basically uh, reinforce this path dependency. So what we, uh, 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 um, we got our hands on part of the strategy funding. We had a vice chancellor for two years, only two years, he, he ran away. But in those two years, he managed to create an opening, get uh, uh, me and colleagues into the strategy against the will of a lot of people. Um, and, and we created this experiment where we said there must be all sorts of individuals within this uh, university regime that are also moving out, that are experimenting, that are looking for more transdisciplinary or transformative ways to do research education. So can we create a platform to bring them together, to empower each other, uh, to develop, uh, uh, to hack the system in a way, to uh, uh, introduce new uh, programs um, and, and to uh, 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 basically be like a Trojan horse uh, and, and uh, transform the system from within. Uh, so we formulated the hypothesis because transitions research is basically that you hypothesize that transitions will happen, that there will be emergence of alternatives, there will be growth because the context will continue to change. More and more people within the regime will, will start to see the need and the urgency. And if you sort of help interlink those individuals, then you can create a critical mass and the evidence and the transition pleasure that becomes like a positive magnet for others. Um, so it, it quickly expanded. This is just a picture from, from last year because every year we had to uh, uh, renew the team. Part of the dominant logic of universities, temporary contracts, um, which is something in itself. And uh, um, uh, we just uh, two days ago had uh, the third DIT day, so we organized yearly events. And it, this, we created a narrative for ourselves saying, okay, we have to explore uh, whether there's indeed a university transition that we can think of. So we, the first year was about building the boat while sailing. There was all sorts of network, but we also had to figure out what is this kind of platform, how to build a Trojan horse, basically. The second year, uh, uh, the, the uh, narrative was we're, we're trying to gather all sorts of stories, uh, images, ideas about universities of the future. It cannot be radical enough. So why not just have no buildings with only palm trees or uh, uh, tree hugging uh, uh, hippies also there. Um, and then the idea was in this process, we create community, we create transition pleasure. So the third year, then we have convinced the regime and we will be dancing with the deans. Well, I can tell you, uh, I invited all of them individually. Uh, half of them uh, responded politely and the others uh, didn't respond at all. So no deans. Uh, one of the colleagues that was involved in the design of the whole thing, they said, uh, well, at first you were dangerous, but now you're toxic. Um, so in that sense, we, we uh, uh, didn't succeed already to, to hack the system. Uh, at the same time, we, we managed to do a lot of stuff that, that might filter through and, and emerge in, in different ways. I'm here. I've also been invited in, in a lot of other places. Um, 
so what we often see is that this kind of stories, they spread in a much more emergent and, and organic way, and I'm very happy to it. So I, I hope you can all, uh, uh, also, people watching this online, connect to uh, what we've done, but also our, our network. We've had a, a, a lot of uh, uh, conversations, sessions, working papers, trying to come up with a narrative about what transforming academia is about. And it resonates with a lot of individuals indeed, perhaps even more individuals in other institutions than our own. What we also managed to do is we created a new master's program. Uh, we had a, a whole cluster of colleagues that work on transformative education. So education should not only about knowledge transfer, but about capacity building. A lot of stories I heard today about it as well. So now you can actually study uh, in a master program transitions. There's knowledge in there complexity thinking and and we've sort of it's a roller coaster uh, 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 that the, that the students go through uh, facing complexity but also then sort of grounding again and and uh, uh, getting uh, sort of more practical there's a lot of attention for intervision and reflexivity and they end up uh, uh, not with a thesis but with an intervention so they do future workshops with bankers or, or uh, they, uh, in two weeks they, they occupy two parking places or uh, they, they work with a local community to uh, uh, introduce a, a community kitchen uh, experiment on a circular boat. So they just do things and, and it's also a good cure uh, against eco-anxiety. Um, what we've also done is, is try to put an academic foundation under this idea of transformative research. Um, making the case against the dominant uh, understanding of what good research is. So, uh, according to us, good research is actually academics that link up to social actors that try to change the system, come up with alternatives or destabilize it, and try to uh, bring research methods, research thinking, academic thinking, distance, uh, 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 independence, to the social process of transformation. But that is by definition normative and explorative and different, but not necessarily unscientific. Um, so we managed, uh, we also attracted a lot of visiting researchers, very happy that uh, uh, Barbara Kump, Christina Bockner, a lot of uh, Germans, by the way, uh, uh, they came and they uh, uh, also experienced the, the platform and the community that we were building as sort of a safe space and an open space uh, to liberate. Uh, the last one is on top is, is uh, the one that we just um, uh, shared, Rachel Williams, uh, one of the research assistants, but uh, she's a great promising young researcher, I would say, uh, 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 led where basically we try to summarize what we've tried to do over the last four years, which is try to think, come up with an institutional design for transformative academic work, because that was the experiment. Um, and we've identified a number of, of dimensions saying, okay, if we, and there's a huge amount of literature already, there are ex examples, how can we uh, uh, um, uh, design institutions to accommodate, appreciate, and support transformative academics. It, it, it requires a context of care, of co-creation, uh, of empowerment, of experimentation, and it has implications for how you design curricula, how you um, reward and recognize uh, researchers, the, the types of roles that you have in teams, not only academic functions, but also uh, designers or mediators or facilitators. And, and uh, um, so in this working paper, uh, we summarize and syn synthesize what's, what's been uh, said in the, in the literature. Um, why I said at the beginning it failed, because the intent also from the free previous vice chancellor was is take four years to build the critical mass and the evidence and the argumentation, help us to establish a new school or institute. Um, and that is not happening. We uh, have to cut budgets at the university and the leadership says, well, um, we're going to start a new process. Um, so the positive societal impact is basically uh, proven to be a bit of a hollow uh, term. I'm going to end up, uh, uh, because then we have some time for questions, I hope. Um, I, I, for me, it's not a debate, but, but uh, academics that, that suggest that they are neutral, 
um, are fooling themselves, but it's also dangerous. Um, because we're all humans, we all have backgrounds, we all have biases. And I think uh, uh, in academia, we should have a reflexive and engaged uh, 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 culture. Um, and there are a lot of structures and cultures uh, established uh, uh, in my university, but in a lot of others that, that prevent that. And I think we need to work really hard as a community uh, uh, to open that up. And I see a lot of good examples at institutions, but it needs uh, much more of a, a collaborative effort. Uh, and, and I hope that our experiment has contributed, but I have also inspired you to uh, take all your good efforts a bit further in a collective way in uh, the coming years. Thank you for listening. Thanks a lot, Derek. We do have time in for questions. Yes, and while Jill gets ready with the microphone, I, you can already put your hands up so we know where there are some questions. Maybe in that corner, maybe over there. <laughs> Raise your hand. And in the meanwhile, now it, re it really seems like a tasking job. Like you mentioned, um, all the deans thought you went from unpleasant to toxic. The government wants to slash your funds. So do you need to think about sort of like subversive guerrilla ways of really getting your science and all your practical implications across. Yeah, yeah but, but that's that's sort of our normal condition that uh, yeah. uh, working on transitions is also going against the current uh, because you're trying to explore pathways that, that are not yet paved. Um, I think we were also a bit naive tr thinking that we could change the whole institution in three years. I, I Maybe we didn't really believe it, but but I think that we got excited by the promise of it and the potential of it. And um, one thing, for example, we did manage to do is we t uh, um, uh, brought together intellectual leadership from all the different schools. We have seven different schools, like law, business, mm -hmm. and so um, on, established professors. And we collectively wrote a, a vision piece that is very uh, outspoken and articulate. Um, and it opened up conversations within all the schools, um, followed up by sessions, um, uh, sustainability dialogues, we call them. And they will, uh, we will have a, uh, the sustainability summit in September. You're all invited where we bring together, try to do something like this. Um, so we we're, we're still have this grassroots uh, infiltration going. Um, it's just the, the, the frustration that I feel that it could go much faster mm. if uh, the formal leadership was gutsy enough uh, mm. to decide for it. And, and that's, a, 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 but uh, fortunately, that, that, yeah, it's difficult. Is it something that's only like, uh, you know, annoying from your perspective? Or does it also sort of like create some frustration from all, specifically all the younger people in there who probably went in there with the hopes of being able to change yeah. something and then running into this wall yeah, might that, also that, that's create what, a reverse uh, effect? I, I, I uh, under mess, underestimated personally a number of things. So one is we, we try to create this nice uh, safe space community. But in the end, we were also forced to have people on temporary contracts mm. because uh, 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 we had to comply with the, the university uh, rules and we uh, should have maybe not. Uh, but that also, uh, and, and it, it, cre it, it was nice to experiment, but if you're established, it's, it's easier to experiment. Mm. Uh, you have less to lose or you have maybe more experience to, to, to uh, give stability. So I think internally it, it, it created for the young uh, people we invited also a bit of vulnerability that, that uh, I certainly uh, should have prevented maybe or uh, been aware of more. The other thing is that we also have academics that are really emotional that uh, university is now saying we, we, we uh, stop it. The, the, uh, we, we're not continuing it because it allowed them to have like this playing space uh, one or two days in the week on a secondment to find like-minded uh, academics and to, uh, to uh, experiment. And they now feel, oh, we have to go, go back into the cage. Mm. Um, so these are two examples. That's of, always yeah. an inherent risk in innovative projects that people once experienced it, they rarely want to go back into the structures they were yes. working in before.
Uh, it's, so it's also dangerous what you open up. At the same time, I think it's also part of the, 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 the pain and, and we have to see, so I'm committed to continuing this in, in one way or another. We have to see how that plays out, be creative. Is there a quick question in the audience? Raise your hand, we have a microphone. If, oh, there is one. Joe, are you ready with the microphone? Quickly, we only have 60 seconds left. Sorry for long answers. No. Hello, Henriette Greulich from TU Dresden. I would be interested in how do you do the upscaling process? Because we have all these lighthouse experimental cross-functional teams, yes. which I'm a very big fan of, the Trojan horse to reform the system from within. But how do you upscale? How do you create acceptance and commitment of all the little kingdoms and deans, yes, so, 40,000 so, students and so on? So what, what I try to explain is that we designed the experiment uh, not with scaling, with, but with diffusion in mind. So the secondments, the conversation with the thought leaders, uh, the dialogues, the workshops, the working papers, the did days. It's community building with people that are in the schools, in our case, uh, teachers, and they bring ideas into uh, 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 their educational programs, conversation within the schools. So that's the infiltration part. The other part is the institutionalization uh, 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 side. So, for example, what, uh, um, uh, we have a big push on sustainability in education. So there's now a working group on uh, um, uh, creating a course for all students, obligatory to uh, 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 do a sustainability or the master program. Um, but our, our sort of biggest trophy was to create some kind of permanence uh, for this kind of a space. So either a faculty-like structure or an institute with the same kind of uh, uh, power uh, as a dean of another school. Um, so that you could also have impact professors or uh, impact career tracks in transformative research or transformative teaching. Uh, an exam board that understands that programs need to be assessed not on theses but on intervention and so on. And that's, we're not there yet, but, but I think we've seen it a lot so uh, I'm not done yet. So the goal is to establish your sort of work and then be able to figure out how to scale it from that security. Yes. Unfortunately, we have to wrap yes. it up here um, with the session to be able to prepare the next session. But thanks so much for joining us, traveling all the way here. Thank you for having me. Thanks a lot. Yes, thank you.